next area we're going to look at here is this contour. This is normally, this is the right atrium. So again, if we look with our eyeball from the sky, we see the right atrium. We fade away. We peel back. And there you can see that that round structure, the SVC drains into it, is the right atrium. This sort of finger-like thing, which is coming in and out of view, is the right atrial appendage. It's the trabeculated part of the right atrium. Embryologically, it comes from the heart. And the smooth part, embryologically, comes from something called the sinus venosus. They come together and make the right atrium. The important part is that this contour is, normally, the right atrium. All right, here is uh, an abnormal uh, case. This pe person had pulmonary hypertension from fibrosing mediastinitis. That's a disease where there's lots of fibrous tissue that uh, can encase the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary veins. That was happening with this person. The peripheral pulmonary arteries and veins were getting encased and narrowed. It caused their main pulmonary arteries to get big, their pressure in the right side to get big. Um, Again, the right atrium makes the right heart border. Here's an angiogram that this person had. At this point, the catheter is right in that right atrial appendage. It starts in the right ventricle, but it flips over to the right, at right, right atrium, and it's in the right atrial appendage. And you can see nicely how the right atrium makes the right heart border, and you can even see the right atrial appendage. In that case, you don't see it as a, a silhouette in the chest X-ray. If we then, again, here's the prominent right atrial appendage visible on the angiogram. If we go to the CT scan, we fade away, we peel back, and we see these collateral vessels. This was from narrowing. This person had their superior vena cava narrowed, so that's what those collateral vessels are from. And again, we can see, like the angiogram, the right atrium makes the right heart border, and we can see a prominent right atrial appendage on this CT scan. We rotate around to the lateral. And we won't get into this much, but you can see how this big right ventricle fills the space behind the sternum on the lateral radiograph. Here's another abnormal case. Another person with pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary artery hypertension, and had tricuspid regurgitation. In other words, regurgitation of the valve between the right atrium and right ventricle. That gives you a big right atrium. We peel back, we peel back our CT scan, and you can see that that right border is made by the right atrium. Here's an echocardiogram, four-chamber view. We see the right ventricle and right atrium, and in this case, the right atrium is enlarged. We'll rotate around. There's a gigantic left pulmonary artery and a big RV outflow which fills the space behind the sternum. Go to the lateral, and there we go. We can even see it there. This is another abnormal case. Again, that contour there is too big. That right atrial contour is too big. This person had Epstein's anomaly. It's a congenital heart disease where the tricuspid valve is sort of displaced and plastered anteriorly. It's kind of hard to see here on this uh, axial MRI, CINI MRI, um, but that leads to the right atrium getting big and can lead to a very big right heart border. This is a congenital problem often seen in children. This person uh, was in their 60s and had gotten that far without it being detected, but it's a nice case because it makes a big right heart border.